The WWE, in the baddest of ways, needed a real deal foundation piece, building block, main event for SummerSlam 2015. So, of course, because they are who they are, they can only go back to the past to be able to find those types of matches. They decided to trot out the guy who can be bothered to wrestle a few pay-per-views a year to take on the guy that can be bothered, apparently, this year to wrestle two pay-per-views a year, and it's Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker. Thank God we at least have that as the main event of SummerSlam as the building block for this show because God knows this company freaking needed it. So, of course, that leaves you in a quandary. What do you do with your WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Seth Rollins? And, you know, you should you would sit there and say, usually you would like your world champion to main event your pay-per-views, especially your biggest shows. And I don't necessarily disagree with that. He doesn't always have to. Uh, but it would be nice if they tended to, because that belt is supposed to be the ultimate be-all, end-all of the WWE. It is the ultimate measuring stick. It is the gold standard. But, of course, you've got Seth Rollins seemingly in a situation similar to a CM Punk or a Daniel Bryan, holding the title, playing second fiddle to something else. Imagine freaking that. Well... Uh, so I sat there and I wondered after Battleground and the finish they did with uh, Lesnar and Rollins. And I'm like, I kind of wish they would have waited until SummerSlam to do that match. It may have been the more appropriate place to do it. However, what else can they do with Seth Rollins as their champion? You, you don't even really have anything logical, you know, ready to go for him. But you could sit there and do Roman Reigns. Obviously, that makes a lot of sense. Going back to their time together in The Shield... The way Seth Rollins turned on the shield to join with the authority. The fact that Roman and Seth really haven't feuded since that happened. We've went to Ambrose plenty of times, and on top of that now we go to great lengths to establish that Ambrose and Reigns are friends. If Ambrose couldn't get the job done, maybe his best bud, Roman Reigns would be the one to get the job done. Yeah, you might not be that thrilled of Roman Reigns getting another title match, and it might not be the most entertaining story in the universe in terms of how they would write it, but it would work and it would be enough to be able to get you through. Or you could sit there and you could say somebody like a Randy Orton would have a major, you know, gripe. He would have a major right to have a title match at SummerSlam because he beat Seth Rollins one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania while Rollins walked out the champion at the end of the night when he successfully cashed in Money in the Bank. Orton still beat him. And yes, while you've already done that this year, Again, you could sit there and say, da da da, it could work. It would work well, but it could work. And then I'm sitting there and I'm saying, hey, you really haven't bothered to build up anybody else into a credible challenger for Rollins because that's what the fuck you do as a company. You've got a guy there that's a part time wrestler, but a full time on screen presence in Triple H. You've actually planted the seed there with Seth Rollins using the pedigree now as his finishing maneuver. Teasing heat and animus between the two parties. Oh my god. I'd like to see Triple H wrestle Seth Rollins for the title at SummerSlam. These are all things that potentially make sense. So of course the WWE goes in the completely opposite direction. Even though they've teed it up potentially where it could go several different other directions that would all work better. They decided they can't help themselves because they can never fucking help themselves. Especially when it comes to this guy. Here comes doo -doo -doo -doo, John fucking Cena and his Jort Johnson and every fucking thing else and whatever hell of color shirt he's wearing for the particular week. Oh my god, he's issuing a challenge to Seth Rollins. He's bad-mouthing the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And lo and behold, wouldn't you know, it's John Cena versus Seth Rollins, U.S. title holder versus WWE World Heavyweight Championship holder at SummerSlam, title versus title. Oh my god, I can feel the Ultimate Warrior Hogan buzz of WrestleMania 6 flowing through my fucking body now! This is so dumb and so fucking stupid. Or the reason this is so stupid is because everything ultimately involving Cena is a colossal waste of fucking time. Him as a U.S. champion is a fucking waste of time. If you know how the story's gonna go and you know how it's going to end, then why the fuck would you even bother watching? I mean, seriously. He does his U.S. title open challenge and he beats everybody. 
Why would you get excited about that? Oh, but the wrestling was really good. How fucking stupid do you sound? And how bad is the wrestling business, in particular WWE's product, become when we're using that as a defense mechanism? We know this fucking shit is stupid. Just say it's stupid because it's stupid. And of course, it's not just the fact that you've got Cena sitting there and getting to face Rollins for the title, even though we've seen this match before in terms of these two facing each other. It's the fact that, as is so often the case, Cena is the bully, Cena is the jerk, Cena is the one originally acting like the ass, yet we're supposed to hate Seth Rollins. And of course, as is, it is with everything involving John Cena, he's the measuring stick, he's the one that has nothing to prove, the other guy has everything to prove that basically don't mean any fucking thing, which is sad and pathetic in this particular case, because Seth Rollins is the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. If anything, it should be Cena trying to see if he can still be that guy. You should be setting it up as if to see if Cena can still win that title again, if he can still be the man. Because Seth Rollins is currently the man. No, instead we book it in a way where Cena is trashing the world title with the company's name on it and the world name the word world in the title for the fucking US title. One belt's got the company's name and the word world in it, yet Cena is sitting there and saying the U.S. championship, the U.S. championship that doesn't have the company's name in it, that doesn't have the word world in it, is more important. And the WWE is presenting it as if that's the case. So we're bringing down the championship for the world and the world champion down a notch so that way we can prop up the second tier mid-card champion. That makes absolutely no fucking sense. That's fucking stupid. And having Seth Rollins act in this way where he's trying to justify his spot, he's trying to defend who he is and what he's got is also fucking stupid. And again, because you know ultimately how these stories ultimately go, they always end up being a fucking waste of time involving Cena they just end up being more stupidity. And what's even more stupid about this, in my opinion, is the fact that I thought part of the reason for Cena winning the U.S. title at WrestleMania 31 was to build up the U.S. title independent of the world title, give Cena something different to do, freshen him up a bit, do different things, elevate other people along the way, and there you fucking go. You're accomplishing multiple things. Well, instead, the WWE just builds people up to ultimately feed to the Cena monster because that's what they've always fucking done over the past decade and will continue to do so perhaps for the next freaking decade. Everything Cena does always comes back to the same thing, the same type of finish. He's beating somebody right away. Why is there a story? Why did this continue to happen? If he does happen to lose to somebody not named Kevin Owens, it's always some type of bullshit. And even when he does lose to somebody like a Kevin Owens 100% clean, then he's pinning them the next time and he's tapping them out the time after that. And even the whole notion of anybody being able to be competitive with John Cena at this point is completely and totally stupid as well. It legitimately is more believable to book Cena in the fashion that I've suggested before, which is for him to grab the mic and basically tell the guy, that I'm John Cena, you're not, you don't matter, you're not shit, you have no chance of winning this, the people don't believe it, so why don't you just fucking lay down in the middle of the ring, I'll stand on top of you, one, two, three, and we'll call it a day. That is so much more believable than the actual shit that we'll get that will ultimately waste our time because we'll actually think it's going to lead to something different and it ultimately comes back to the same shit. We've been there, we've done that for ten fucking years now. But even when we get to the match itself, this shit is also stupid because there's really no good result that can come out of this. Now, sure, you could sit there and live in that fantasy land of Seth Rollins beating John Cena clean, but <laughs> any thought of that happening certainly went out the door once he busted up John Cena's nose with that knee. Good job, Seth. Good job. But think about it. If Cena wins clean... He's a 16-time world champion. That's stupid in and of itself. Furthermore, though, he would have won in the first match of this freaking rivalry. So again, why even bother to have it? Yeah, you could sit there and say, well, you got the rematch, everything else. Why even fucking bother? If the villain can't get over the good guy, then what the hell does that say about the villain? And what the hell does that say about the hero? And why would we even care what the hell either one of them fucking does? We don't, and we shouldn't, because it's stupid. If Seth Rollins gets DQ'd, then it makes him look like a punk-ass bitch and a scared coward. 
And again, that's stupid. If we have them get counted out, it makes them look like a coward, which again is stupid. Cena is the mid-card champion. Rollins is the top guy champion. He should be acting like the top guy. He shouldn't have to sit there and act like a punk bitch that's afraid of the U.S. champion. That's so ridiculous. Imagine if somebody at the U.S. champion challenged John Cena to a title versus title match at SummerSlam. It's amazing how different the presentation of the world champion would be heading into that match, and you know it's goddamn true. It most certainly is damn true. But then let's say you have Cena lose because of countout. Then it's fucking stupid because, again, it was a waste of time, and you've done nothing to validate Seth Rollins and his spot at the top. And then you're just ultimately kicking the bucket down the road to where eventually you know you're going to fucking do it anyways, put the strap on Cena. So again, why waste our fucking time? Or you sit there and do some type of double count out or double DQ, which again is equally stupid because you're just kicking the bucket further down the road to where ultimately the result's going to be the same. It always fucking is. LOL, Cena wins. It's a waste of time. I think three of the most valuable commodities we have in this world are water, oxygen, and time. And we probably shouldn't waste or burn away any of them. But yet the WWE loves to waste our time and it's bad enough we're going to be wasting four hours of our time come next Sunday to watch SummerSlam. The last thing we should have is the WWE wasting any more of our time, which most certainly ties into John Cena versus Seth Rollins, title versus title. It's winner take all is the billing line, but yet you know the way it's going to turn out. You almost get the sense there's going to be some really screwy, wishy-washy finish where nobody takes any fucking thing, which then again just means the WWE was giving you false advertisement. Imagine that. Or by God, they could have Seamus fucking cash, and I don't even want to begin on how stupid that would freaking be at this time. Everything about the build-up to this match is stupid. Everything about Cena actually getting a chance to wrestle in this match at SummerSlam is stupid. Everything they've done with Seth Rollins and his character out of this has been fucking stupid. This match is fucking stupid. Oh, it's going to be good. No, we're sitting there trying to lie to ourselves and make it seem like it's better than it really fucking is. Cena's matches are all the fucking same. It's just a spot to get to a spot to get to a spot. There is no cohesiveness. There is absolutely no attempt to tell any type of story whatsoever. There's very little to no selling going on whatsoever from the Cena side of things. It's the same type of moves and the same type of fucking sequence. The guy botches half of the fucking moves that he does do, and the other half still look kind of stupid. He'll sit there and call out the spots in such a way throughout the match that you could either see him doing it, via the way his mouth moves, or you can fucking hear him. That's how loud he is in doing it. Yet you'll get numerous near falls and false finishes, numerous applications and uses of a finisher just to have people kick out, therefore further demeaning the finisher, especially when it's not John Cena's fucking finisher, the guy who can't even apply his own submission maneuver correctly. Oh my fucking God, do I need to go on? This match is fucking stupid. Because if Cena doesn't win, it's going to be some type of stupid crap. It's going to be some type of stupid bullshit. And then if Cena does win, ultimately it's more stupid crap and stupid bullshit. Because why in the fuck even bother having that match at SummerSlam at all if you were just going to do it any fucking ways? You do whatever the hell you want. This shit is going to be stupid. It is stupid. And I hope some of you see it that way too.